What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up? What's up, family? Hey, today we have a special episode, and this is just me talking about something that I don't talk about a lot, but I get asked a lot about this topic and something that I I honestly think should be talked about more. And that's the dealing with mental anxiety and more importantly, specifically dealing with depression. And so I know that whether you're a real estate agent listening to this, whether you're just a pure entrepreneur that you got your hands in a lot of different things, a lot of the times our toughest battles is overcoming our own mental challenges. And I think the first thing that starts with is the social media world and just the world in general Mm -hmm. where we're dealing with a lot of comparisons and it's not a lot of the times even us um, being compared to someone else or you know another situation it's us comparing ourselves to someone else's situation when in all reality you can't even do that because 95% of the time, you're not comparing apples to apples. I would even go as high as to say like 98% of the time, it's never apples to apples. There's always a different type of a context of why someone else is in the situation that they're in, whether that means that it's money, whether that means that it's their circle, whether it means that they got help as in a, a spouse or, you know, a parent, whatever it might be, their situation is not like yours. So it's unfair to compare yourself to someone else in their situation, right? And and so it's crazy because I believe that I read in a study and it had said um, in Gallup, and anybody who knows Gallup, they have like the strength finders and things like that. But Gallup did a study and they said 30%, uh, 34% to be exact, 34% of entrepreneurs, which is 4% higher than any other industry workers, admitted that they were worried. And 45% of entrepreneurs said that they were stressed, which is still 3% higher than any other worker in any industry, right? So being an entrepreneur, again, it's there's a lot of pros with it, but then we also know that there's a lot of cons with it. A couple stats that I saw that really stuck out to me because I was looking at it to say, okay, I don't know if you've ever heard, but they said that real estate is the easiest industry to enter you know, barrier to entry, it has the easiest, but it's also the hardest to be successful in. And that makes sense. I mean, the National Association of Realtors says that 87% of all real estate agents get out of the business within just five years of getting their real estate license, which is crazy. That's saying almost nine out of every 10 people that get their real estate license will not hold their real estate license after five years. Why is because when you're after you, I was just talking to one of my buddies last night about this. He was over the house and I was talking to him. He had just gotten his real estate license. He has just gotten his real estate license in the last month and a half. And so once you, I tell real estate agents this all the time, but once you pass the test, that test in itself does not teach you how to sell real estate. But once you pass the test, you feel even more lost because at least you had a goal in the beginning, right? I got to take this class. It's 30, 60, 80 hours, how many ever hours it is. And I got to take another class. Same thing. It's going to be 30, you know, 60, 90 hours, whatever it is, whatever state or market that you're in. And then I got to pass my test. Once I pass that test, that means I'm certified. So you had goals, you knew what the end result would be, that you would be licensed realtor professional. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Think about that. You you always have a goal, whether you're going to school to be a doctor. You know you got to go through your residency. Once you pass all your boards, boom, then I am, you know, a licensed, certified, you know, physician, right? Well, after you pass that test, let's use real estate, then becomes the real work. Because now you have to figure out, okay, how do I go out here and be successful? But more importantly than that, you have to first sit down and figure out what is my goal for real estate. I talk to so many agents, whether they're seasoned or whether they're new, and I'm like, okay, well, what is your goal for next year? Let's use 2020. Can you honestly say that you have a goal already written out for 2020? For most people, they do not. I talk about, okay, let's look at back even this year or last year. Do you know your numbers? Most people, they do not. 
They don't know how many deals that it takes to be able to net whatever they want to net. You want to net a quarter million dollars from real estate? Okay, what's your average commission? If it's 3%, how many listings then you do you need to take? Or how many buyers do you need to take if you're in a 3% market? I know here in Omaha, we're at 2.4%. So you have to be even more aggressive with listings so you can make up for it, right? But many of people, they don't think about that. So this is something that I always try to make sure that anybody, especially if they're on my team in real estate, um, I try to make sure that we got a plan up front to know, okay, how much do you want to make? You want to make $80,000? Okay, well, the average home price is how much, right, in your market? If it's going to be three hundred and fifty, dollars then we got to work that number backwards from the $80,000 based off of the numbers that we're already given. It's no different than simple math, but most people, they get in, they pass that license, and there's a lot of things that you got to do. You got to be your own marketer. You got to be your own accountant. You got to be your own bookkeeper. You got to be your own salesperson. You got to be your own counselor. You got to be your own, you know, broker at times, depending on what type of support that you're getting. You have to make a lot of different calls. You're obviously a business owner, and that's what a lot of people have to do. But in real estate, I feel like it's the purest form of entrepreneurship because you have no guidance. And most of the time in real estate, not only is it dog eat dog, which is not in every case, but more importantly, you feel like you're on an island. And I'm sure you probably can relate to this because even if you join a national brokerage or whatever brokerage that it is, a lot of the times that broker, if it's a big enough brokerage, if you're talking about the big dog names like Berkshire or Remax or Keller Williams, most of the time that broker is no longer selling real estate. They only make they only make their money by really doing one thing, and that's recruiting. They have to recruit the top talent to their brokerage. If you're at a smaller brokerage or there's only 10 or 15 people, then yeah, they probably make their money off of not only recruiting, but more so they got to put in their own production. So what does that mean? They try to sign you with a mentor. Well, the problem with that is not that the mentor does not want to help you, but more importantly, the mentor has still got to focus on their own production and they're still their own marketer. They're still their own bookkeeper. They're their own, you know, uh, advisor, advisory council, whatever it might be. Right. So then they're always focused on they got to run. They got to run. And most real estate agents they're and, and business owners in general, where we lose that is we forget that it's all about setting up systems to make it duplicatable. Right. So then we can eventually get ourselves out. Right. Real estate agents specifically, I know that they're always so transactional. So then at the end of the year, what happens? They have to start all over. Well, the problem is, especially if you get your real estate license in May, June, July, and now they say, hey, we got a mentor that's going to help you. If they're a mentor worth having, most likely that they're out in the field, they're running, running, running. Right. And now if they don't have any invested interest in you, what does that mean? That means that now you feel bad always asking them questions. They don't have an invested interest in you. They're trying to feed their family just like you are. They had to learn it just like you did. Now, that's not to say that they won't help you, but you probably feel like, man, I don't want to be a burden on that person. I don't want to continuously bug that person. Well, then what happens? You don't get the knowledge. You don't get the information. And then you feel like you're on an island. And then, at sure enough, you do one, maybe two deals. You see how expensive it is. And you say, you know what? I'm just going to go try something else, right? So when you think about it, that definitely contributes to mental depression, right? When you're feeling like you're lost when you're out there on an island. And when you're an entrepreneur, you can imagine that this happens all the time. At least when you go work at a W-2 job or in a corporate environment, they already have systems put up in place and people are already getting salaries rather than just being 100% commissioned. So they have more time to be able to help you. Now, again, remember what I said. It's not saying that this is not a blanket statement, but it is the truth. And I'm sure if you're a newer agent, you've probably felt this way. And then you start to feel neglected because that broker who sold you on the dream said that you were going to have so much systems, you're going to have so many, so much support. And that didn't happen. And so I wanted to think about what are some ways that we could figure out how to have more control over our mental stability and not be depressed in life. So that's what I'm going to share with you guys today. My, my four things that I've learned on how you can relieve some of that depression and make sure that you're always focusing on the different perspective in life. So Number one, 
Be kind to yourself. What does that mean? That means that you cannot play the woe is me game. If you constantly, it's like the law of attraction. I'm sure that you've, you've heard about the law of attraction, but what you think about is what you'll become, right? If you think negative thoughts all the time, you're going to become a negative person. If you think about your goals, if you think about your dreams, if you think optimistically all the time, you're going to become an optimistic person. If constantly you're saying, oh my God, I'm too fat. What do you think your your subconscious mind is telling yourself? Oh my God, I'm fat. So when you look in the mirror, what is it? Oh my God, I'm fat. Oh my God, I can't talk to people at networking events. What do you think that your subconscious mind is saying? The moment that you get to a networking event, your knees start to shake. You know, you start to sweat pretty profusely, right? And you're like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Why? Is because you've told yourself something so many times that now your subconscious mind is already telling yourself, yes, you are, because all it can really think about is what you feed it. That's all it can think about. So they're saying, oh, my God, what are you doing here? You know you don't know how to talk to people. Oh, my God, why are you trying to get in a gym? You know that you're always going to be a fat person, right? So you have to figure out ways that you can tell yourself positive things. And that means that you have to be kind to yourself. Just like we're taught to be kind to others, you have to be kind to yourself. You have to say affirmations to yourself. Some of the best people that I know in this world, and I'm not talking about the richest, I'm talking about the best people when it comes to their heart. They are very kind to themselves. Very kind to themselves. They take time to get massages. They take time to spend time with their family. They take time to exercise their mental brain by reading or listening to podcasts. They work on themselves first. But what that means is you have to be kind to yourself. So that's number one. Number two, you have to be kind to other people. Nobody wants, you have to protect your energy. And this is something that I've always been, and I know if you've been listening to me in season one or anywhere else, you know that I'm always big about protecting your energy. Why? Is because everybody's not going to be on the same frequency as you. There's a saying out there that people come in your life for different seasons for different reasons. We know that we can look back if you are you know, 24, 25 years old, there were some friends that you had when you were 16, 17. And the reality of it is, is you don't have those friends anymore. Not because they're bad people. It's just because you grew apart. Your frequency was different than their frequency, but you had to protect your energy because just as my opinion, the great Nipsey Hussle said, right? Circle get smaller. Everybody can't go. Everybody cannot go with you on this journey. And especially if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, what that means is that you're trying to get out here and change the world. So that means you have to stand out in a world where everyone is taught to fit in. So people aren't going to understand your vision. So you have to let those people go. You have to hope and pray that one day they'll come to their senses to understand that they were worth, they're meant something, they're meant for something way bigger. But the reality of it is, is they might not ever see that because their perspective might be different than yours. But understand that there's always a lesson to be learned from whatever relationship. Nothing is ever a loss. It's always a lesson, right? Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. And sometimes we got to go through a lot of pain to come out on the other side and experience the sunshine. For you to really understand and really feel how great springtime is, you had to just come out of a terrible winter. Then you're going to love the springtime. You're going to be all outside. For someone to truly understand what it's like to be able to birth a child, imagine if they went through two, five, seven years of infidelity. When that first baby comes, oh my God, it's it's, it's everything, right? But that's what you got to understand. Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. So you got to be nice to other people because nobody always wants to be around somebody that's always negative. So that means that you got to protect your energy because if you're around somebody that's always negative, what is that going to do? right? It's going to capitalize. Bad company is going to trump good company. That's why when you listen to anybody who's so successful, they say you are the sum of the five people who you hang around the most. Choose your associates wisely. So for me, I'm always trying to associate with somebody who wants more out of life, who has bigger dreams, who has bigger goals, who has bigger ambitions, who's ready to go change the world. And that's not very easy because most people will settle in life. Right. 
comfortability is the enemy of success. Most people, they'll disguise their fear and saying, oh, you know what? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm happy. Right. Well, that we can also admit is there's something out there to be said for being happier or happiest. When are you the happiest in your life? Most people just want to settle. So you got to protect your energy because otherwise it's going to have you feeling like that you are not supposed to go after everything that God put you on this earth for. Right. So as we come back to it, number two is be nice to other people. I can't tell you how many times I hold doors open, how many times I say, please, I say, thank you, regardless of who the person is, what their skin color is, no matter what, because my goal is to always give off vibrant, positive energy. That's it. Our days are made up of energy. Who knows where that will take me? But all I know is there's only two things that I can really control. And I would say the same thing for you. It's your energy. And it's your effort, right? Those are the only two things that you can control. And how you respond to something else could be the third, but I would say that that's probably your energy and also your effort. How much energy and effort do you give to that negative, to that pessimistic person? Hopefully not a lot because you're focused more on the positives. So that's number two. Be nice to other people. Number three, try to listen more to learn about other people. This is a habit that takes a very long time because us naturally as human beings, we want to talk. Think about your child. Think about your niece, your nephew. When they get excited to tell a story, grandma comes to town, grandpa comes to town. They, I know CJ does this all the time where he'll just butt in and say something and then I'm looking at him like, uh, cool story, bro, right? But they get excited and us as human beings, we all do it. We all want to talk. Right. But if you listen and you allow other people to talk about themselves, you're going to learn more ways that you can help them. And if you help more people get what they want, again, it will help you get what you want. And now you'll never feel lonely because you know that you got a circle of soldiers because you're always the first one to help them. So they're always going to be right there to help you. Assuming, right, that one, they understand that you need help because you've communicated that. Two, they notice that you're not being nice to yourself. You're down. You know, you're, you're not your normal self. Three, they know that you're probably not saying enough nice things about them. So they're like, oh, man, what's going on? I see Bobby over there. He's not himself right now. Right. But you have to be willing to listen to other people to be able to learn more about them, to get into their inner circle. Because if you just come in in the beginning, that's the quickest way you talk about yourself all day. Well, then, yeah, if you're doing all these great things, but other people are dealing with these mental things as well, right? And if you're constantly talking about yourself and all the good things that you're doing and you're never listening to other people, after a while, they're not going to want to talk to you. Because they know that, oh, he's going to talk about his Bentley. Oh, he's going to talk about the new house he just got under contract. Oh, he's going to talk about that. And now they're like, man, he's so self-centered or she's so selfish. And it's not to say you shouldn't be proud of your accomplishments, but learn to listen a little bit to understand where you can help other people. Because if somebody else is struggling with something, you might be that golden nugget that can help them get out of it. But you'll never know if they're struggling with it if you do not allow them to at least voice what's going on with them. So allow people to talk about themselves because then you don't have to spend all the time talking about you. So now you feel like you're really involved in a community, everybody helping each other. Hopefully this makes sense. I know when I first got started, I used to always love to talk about myself. Why do you think I started the podcast and I brought on so many different entrepreneurs, different walks of life? Because I understood that, yes, everybody's not going to get the inspiration or the drive to go out and live a life by their design from me. So they needed to be able to hear other perspectives. They needed to be able to resonate with somebody else who's maybe just a couple steps ahead of them or maybe even in the same situation as them or maybe in the same industry as where they're trying to get into. So for my goal was to listen, bring all of that information from someone else and then pass it along to you or whoever else is listening because that's how I can inspire people to live a life by their design, which is my total goal at the end of the day. But I had to be willing to listen and not just talk about myself. And last but not least, the last one I would say is the most important one. 
And I'll tell you why I would say this is the most important one. is because for me, I've been mentally drained and exhausted by this for many, many years in my life. And I really had to do some studying to see why exactly am I so drained? Am I experiencing mental fatigue when all I'm trying to do is help so many people? And what I learned is you cannot change people. You have to focus on yourself. You might be thinking, oh, my God, if so-and-so, why won't they just listen to me? I know in real estate, I try to do this all the time. People get so caught up in the brand and thinking that they need a broker, thinking that they need, you know, this big office, when in reality, if we really just looked at our situation, we don't need any of those things because we're not really even utilizing those things right now to our full potential, right? And we're still making it work. But people think that they have to. And so when you try to show someone a better way, you try to show them light and they don't see it at the end of the tunnel. As one of my mentors, Jay-Z says, and I'm going to keep it PG because I know there's some younger people that listen to this as well. But he says, I'm trying to get these brothers with no stripes to be official. Right. I'm going to say it again. He says, I'm trying to get these brothers with no stripes to be official. So what does that mean? He's trying to be able to help you be able to see the light. But we all know if you have kids, if you have younger brothers and sisters, you've you've been there, you've experienced it. You're trying to help them understand that here's a better option, a better solution. But people can't get out of their own way, right? In real estate, I think this is always the case. People do not want to get out of their own way. So what does that mean? That means that you can't really focus on other people. You have to just focus on yourself. But how can you still help those people? Well, I'll tell you something that I've learned. Number one, you can lead by example, right? Stop trying to make other people do things. All you got to do is do it, do it your way. And then honestly, showcase and document the way that it's going. If you want people to understand how important it is to travel with family, you go travel with your family. Put it out there on Facebook, on Instagram. Other people are going to see it and they're going to say, man, you know, I love what he's doing right now with this family. I wish I could eventually it's just like the dog and the nail on the porch. When the pain becomes too much, what will happen? We know what will happen. The dog will eventually get up. And that's the same thing. When the pain becomes too much, you hope and pray that it's not too late, but eventually that person will start to change their ways. That's it. To make a major change in life, Most of the time, the reason why we make major changes is only for two reasons. Number one, it's going to be you're running towards something, as in pleasure. Or number two, it's going to be you're running away from something, as in pain. A lot of the times, more people move because they're running away from something. That's why we're our strongest when our backs are against the wall. So that's number one. You just got to lead by example. Number two is going to be you got to be a coach rather than a consultant. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you got to make sure that you ask more questions. That comes with what we just talked about, listening. When people come to you with their frustrations, it's going to be easy for us to try to give the answers, which is being a consultant. You're giving advice. But if you become a coach, more times than not, you're then just asking people what they think about certain scenarios. And and what that really allows is for other people to then come to the conclusion themselves. Because I'm sure you do, and I know I do, we all know some people that they won't do something, no matter how right it is, if they didn't come up with it themselves, right? So you got to be more of a coach than a consultant. Ask more questions, right? Rather than trying to suggest more answers. That's number two. And then the last thing that I would say of how do you help somebody is the last thing that I would say is it goes back to protecting your energy. What that means is if somebody's not on your frequency level, even if it's for a season or a short period of time, you have to remove that person from your inner circle. You have to remove them from your life for the time being. You cannot allow that person to sabotage everything that you already have. Now, sabotage might be a strong word because maybe they're not trying to intentionally do it, but you cannot allow that person to bring down your morale, your spirit, you being kind to yourself, you being kind to other people people, right? Remember, there's something else that I I learned is it's called self-development, self-improvement. 
which means that you can't do it for someone else. You can do it for yourself, but they got to do it for themselves. And so you, while you want to love on them and you can love on them from a distance, hitting them with a text here or there, phone call here or there, you cannot put all of your energy into trying to bring someone else over across the river when they didn't even want to get in the boat when you first got in the boat. Now, all of a sudden you had to go back. You're still trying to talk to them about getting in the boat. They still don't want to get into the boat. At some point, you got to get over to the other side of the boat and you got to just wave to them. And say, hey, if you ever want to come over, you let me know. But until then, I got to go. I got to go. I think it was the great Tony Robbins that said, most businesses don't fail because of the people they hire, but because of the people that they fail to fire. The problem is we never want to let go. And at some point, you got to let go because we all have one life. And regardless if you want to think about it or not, Eventually, that day is going to come to an end for you. Did you do everything that you could to work on being the best version of you? So when your time does come to an end, you lived it with no regrets. You lived it without wondering if you compromised any of your values, your visions, your integrity. So that means that you got to make sure that you're going all in on you. So that's all I got for you today. Hopefully, this has been one that you all could have learned a little bit from. Of course, my goal is always to inspire you to live a life by your design. But if you do not take action, it will only merely be a fantasy. Hey, guys, thank you for sticking with me and watching this video. Now, if you've gotten any value out of this video, I want you to do me a favor. I need you to make sure that you hit that subscribe button and also turn on those bell notifications. What that's going to do is it's going to tell you whenever I drop more heat just like this video. And make sure that you hit that like button because that's going to let the YouTube gods know that more people need to be seeing this video. I appreciate you watching and as a token of my appreciation, I dropped a couple more videos for you to take a look at in the meantime until I drop more heat. Remember, in the dream we trust, but you got to take action. Otherwise, that dream that you have will only merely be a fantasy. I'll catch you on the next one.